roundabout Oak Park neighbors call a nightmare. CBS 8 is working for you. We show you the update from the city placing new signs. Everything you need to know about the monkeypox vaccine in San Diego County. Part car, part motorcycle. The new electric vehicle made only for the city. And 17 years later, Randy and Edwina reflect upon their wedding ceremony conducted by Larry Himmel. And how you can up your chances of winning the Mega Millions jackpot. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. Just a short time ago, the city, San Diego City Council voted to accept a controversial settlement deal over the 101 Ash Street property. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Chiquetta. I'm Jesse Pagan in for Marcella Lee. An asbestos issue has left the building mostly empty for the past five years, and critics say this deal should have never gone forward. The CBS 8's Richard Allen is live downtown tonight with an update on all this. Richard? And Jesse and Carlo, City Council voted 6-3 to three to accept this highly controversial settlement surrounding 101 Ash Street and Civic Center Plaza, bringing to an end at least one part of this messy real estate saga that stretches back to 2017 when Kevin Faulkner was the mayor of San Diego. Let's take a look at some video of the building in question here. That was when it was discovered that 101 Ash Street, which the city had secured in a lease-to-own deal with Sister Development, was uninhabitable because of asbestos which would have required about $140 million to remedy. So essentially, the city was paying on a lease for an empty building. Now, under the terms of the settlement, the city will take over ownership of 101 Ash Street and Civic Center Plaza for $132 million. City officials plan to use funds previously set aside for other capital projects to help foot the bill for this. Now, the city will also be refunded $7.4 million in profits the development company made on the Ash Street deal, while Sestera would keep more than six million dollars in profits from a similar deal it made on the Civic Center Plaza deal. Now opponents of the settlement including council members Vivian Moreno, Marnie Von Wilpert and Monica Montgomery Stepp who all voted against the settlement say it does not hold the development company responsible and also takes taxpayer money away from improvement projects the city needs. Now Mayor Todd Gloria acknowledged this was not an easy decision but that the situation the city finds itself in now leaves no opportunity for a perfect perfect outcome. And there is also civil litigation and a city lawsuit moving forward surrounding this deal. One of that, the city lawsuit, is expected to hit the courts in about six months' time, showing that even though this settlement was approved, this saga continues. Jesse and Carlo. Thank you, Richard. There are new signs up at a traffic circle in Oak Park tonight, and neighbors well, why are didn't, relieved. Why didn't some, this comes hurt. after are a dangerous spike why, in major why, why car wrecks you, there that CBS 8 first told you about two weeks ago. CBS 8's Heather Hope is okay. working for you and has an update tonight on the city's safety improvements. Just two weeks ago today, we told you about Oak Park neighbors who said it's been dangerous and it's been a nightmare trying the, to navigate uh, this field. roundabout on Streamview Drive. Well, we're happy to report yeah. CBS 8 You're working welcome. for you. There's been an update with the city placing new signs. Adding crosswalk and yield signs, City of San Diego trucks are shown at Streamview and Gale in Oak Park last week. They came and they measured the lip here. The engineer came out. They replaced the white lines here. They've added 23 more confusing signs. I spoke to Oak Park resident of 30 years, April Mahoney, this afternoon, upset at the spike in accidents in her neighborhood traffic circle. Eight accidents in the last 18 months. A cat only has nine lives. CBS 8 spoke to April on July 12th, highlighting the major wrecks taking out fences and destroying cars. <laughs> Since our story aired, city crews have worked to improve the traffic circle. A statement emailed from a city spokesperson reads, In response to community safety concerns, transportation department engineers evaluated roundabouts on Streamview Drive and have installed signage and striping on the approaches to the roundabouts that were previously missing or required updating. The updated signage and striping is intended to alert drivers to the presence of the roundabouts and mitigate collisions caused by speeding and distracted driving. They are taking an active listening position to what our concerns are. April says the signs are just a first step for safety. It's a launch pad. 
There's no deterrent. If you have pretty rocks or you have a signage, people are like, oh, wow, you know, let me slow down. I spoke to San Diego Police Captain Manuel Del Toro, who sent patrol officers to the area who conducted a speed survey. The traffic pattern uh, was a little confusing to them. Captain Del Toro tells me his traffic division cited issues with the height of the curb and a request for speed bumps. They uh, submitted a request to our traffic engineering division, who's going to be looking at it. April is happy she has a meeting set up with her city council member, Monica Montgomery Steps, on Friday. Streamview lives matter. I care about my neighbors. I care about my community. Heather Hope, CBS 8, working for you. CBS 8 is working for you. If there's an issue you'd like us to look into, email us at workingforyou at cbs8.com. Right now, all lanes are back open on the northbound I-5 just south of Tamarack Avenue in Carlsbad before they were blocked off after a cement truck overturned just after 2.30 this afternoon, shutting down all lanes but one. Caltrans crews worked for hours to clean up spilled concrete and other fluids. Still no word on the driver's condition. Thousands of firefighters are starting to get a handle on the Oak Fire burning near Yosemite National Park. It has burned more than 18,000 acres and is 26% contained. At least 55 homes and structures have been damaged since the fire started Friday. A wave of humidity rolled in overnight. That allowed crews to set up control lines and put out some hot spots. Fire officials are confident that they can keep that fire out of Yosemite National Park. A local tattoo artist is quickly becoming a social media star for all the right reasons. Forrest Lang uses his skills to help victims of sexual violence. As CBS 8's Steve Price reports, Lang's followers are helping him change lives for the better. Make sure you take a lot of big deep breaths, okay? The sting from the needle is nothing compared to the agony of the emotional scars this tattoo is covering. Marks on Jeremy's arm from his childhood caused by a sexual predator's violence. It's a very big wound that 68 million Americans carry. Forrest Lang understands the pain. The La Jolla-based tattoo artist is also a survivor of childhood sexual violence, and he knows he's not alone. There was a woman at a local rehab center who had been um, sexually assaulted at 14 years old, and when these monsters were done, um, they tattooed their initials into her hip. Forrest used his tattooing talent to turn those initials into beautiful artwork that covered them up. I felt such a tremendous power that I felt like I was doing something good and I was exactly where I was supposed to be, doing exactly what I was supposed to do. Forrest shared that experience last month in a TikTok video, answering a question from a follower about his favorite tattoo. It quickly went viral and now has over 250,000 likes, but it's what happened in the comment section that really inked his future. Jeremy wrote, I have scars that trigger me. One day I'll cover them with tattoos. Forrest wrote back, someday my nonprofit will fly you to me to put you in a hotel and cover the cost of me covering those tattoos. Others who saw the video and comments quickly responded that they had to make it happen. So they set up a GoFundMe account and raised enough money to fly Jeremy out from Tennessee and put him up in a hotel. Forrest donated his time and ink. I feel the best about it when I'm doing work like this, so I would like to do more. Forrest would like to help more sexual assault victims, but the cost of living in San Diego limits the amount of time and supplies he can donate. So he's hoping to set up a nonprofit that can not only help cover expenses, but also contract with tattoo artists around the country, making it easier for victims to find someone closer to their home. As for Jeremy, he can't thank for his social media fans enough. His followers have been so awesome. I'm speechless. Here's the finished product, planting roots for a better future. Steve Price, CBS 8.